Jed, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know you've got a bit a pretty busy schedule, but we appreciate you taking the time out of that to, to speak to us. Um, just talk us through what's happening and how are you preparing yourself and the team preparing themselves for that September the 12th start day? Yep, so we come up uh, to Edinburgh yesterday, uh, via flew up yesterday and then uh, training started last night, done a bit of a light session last night and then we're um, up here till Saturday sort of doing double sessions every day. Uh, so it's typical sort of on the grass in the mornings and then gym-based stuff in the afternoon. Um, but it's actually been quite good because we're not obviously as unfit as normal where we have six weeks off. We sort of only had a couple of weeks off. So um, it's quite good to get back in and not have to work as hard as we typically would in a pre-season because uh, obviously our fitness levels are already semi-decent where we had the uh, crazy amount of fixtures obviously after the lockdown. How does this pre-season compare to other pre-seasons? And obviously you just talked about there that the time difference is obviously a major factor, but how different is it in general with the the return to football kind of way that you, you're getting used to it and so many different techniques that you have to do compared to where normal season you just get in and, and get out kind of thing? Yeah, it's different. Uh, I won't lie. It's normally when you sort of pre-season, you're looking forward to getting back and then that first game of the season always has a huge feel with a packed stadium and excitement from the fans and obviously we're not going to have that this year, um, which is a shame. Um on the flip side of that, I think now there's talks maybe about some fans being able to come back after the few games, um, which is something that I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, I'd be lying if I said I've enjoyed the games as much as I normally would, which I've not, to be honest. It's much better when that atmosphere is there, uh, especially in this league, even away games. There's obviously so many good away games that we've, that we've not been able to do with the travelling fans and obviously at the Den as well. It's, just, it's not been the same, to be honest with you, Ryan, but it's, uh, it is what it is. Um, we had a good season last season, pre-season. This season, like I said before, it's not as tough as typically it would be because we're not as unfit as we normally would be after six weeks off. Uh, so it's more just sort of getting back into the flow of things, um, getting used to everything again, obviously the testing, all that sort of stuff again for the COVID-19 and testing and all this sort of stuff. And then sort of um, getting ready to go because it's going to have to be cramming a lot of fixtures in this season, obviously, because we're going to have to play catch up a little bit. We just touched on it there. Last season, you had a, a fantastic season, just finishing two points outside the playoff places. It shows what the might be to come this season, isn't it? Yeah, we had a great season. Um, I think this, the season before, the one that just finished, we really struggled. So I think not many people fancied us to do as well as we did last year. Uh, obviously, our, our uplifting form sort of come round when the manager, new manager come in and since the gaffers come in, um, I think we've really improved. New style of play, a um, couple of new big players for us. Um, obviously, getting Ryan Woods back again this season and a really exciting sign and getting Troy Parrott from Tottenham as well. who's looked really sharp in training. So it's, it's exciting times. I think the manager won't allow the football club to stand still. And we've got a group of players that really want to push the club on. So hopefully this season we can um, certainly get in that top half again and, and maybe even go on better. You just talked about it there once again about a new manager coming into the building. Sometimes that can be a little bit difficult for teams to adapt, especially because he came in as two, three months of the season. We're already underway. What's it like working under someone like Gary Rower? Obviously, a very experienced manager in this division as well. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, to be honest, Neil Harris left us in a great state in terms of um, the personnel and the, the per personalities that we had in the changing room. Uh, we were cl close knit group already. Um, he obviously took us a very long way from when I first signed. We were at mid table league one side, and Neil built us into um, a really, really competitive championship team. And then, obviously, since the new managers come in, um, I think we've we've changed the way we play, um, which suits some people more than it suited others. Um, we play a little bit more football, which has allowed someone like me personally and people like Marlon Romeo and Connor Connor Mahoney, uh, Matt Smith. We've managed to to chip in with a few goals and assists, and I think with the way we're playing um, going forward, certainly need to keep looking to improve. And our main strength always for me has been defensively, um, but since the managers come in, we're working hard to get more possession of the ball and hopefully create more chances. I think something that we definitely need to do. You've definitely been a bit modest about yourself there. You said that you chipped in with a few goals and assists. I think it worked out uh, 10 goals and 13 assists for yourself last season. Obviously a fantastic return for yourself personally. Is this one of the best seasons that you would have had in the professional game? Yeah, um, definitely. I think as an attacker, you're always sort of judged on your end product. Um, the assist one, it's always a difficult one to gauge because you can dribble past four people and pit on a plate for someone and they miss or you can Coops have one at the end of the season our centre half passed it to Ryan Leonard in midfield and he spanged in the top corner from 40 yards so they're, they're always difficult ones to judge uh, I think I'm more 
I would look at more how many chances I've created really and uh, created a lot of chances last season. So that's that's the main thing really. Um, ultimately, as an attacking player, like you say, you judge on your own product and that is my job uh, to sort of score and create goals. And we've got a lot of firepower in the front positions. Uh, I think Matt Smith, for example, would, he played probably the least minutes in the league and goals to minutes ratio was through the roof. So we've got a lot of goals in the team. I just think at times uh, we need to be more clinical in that final third. And if we can defend like we did last season, I think we have one of the best. I think Bar in goal actually kept the most clean sheets. So we just need to nick a few goals uh, more here and there. And then I think we've got all the recipe to be uh, up and around that top six again, hopefully. I think you must have secretly tapped into my uh, questions beforehand because every time that I go back on, you're already answering it. <laughs> I've just done a lot of these already. I, I'm well tuned. I've done a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> just, just talk to us about that because I was just going to say you, you were picked as uh, the second runner-up as the player of the season for the club's player of the season. The keeper but got it on the return of his clean sheet basis. He was in very impressive fashion, wasn't he, last season? Unbelievable. Um it's a typical Mill signing, really, and someone that got wrote off a little bit at Ipswich. Um, obviously, at Ipswich have a difficult season, and then obviously people saying that uh, Bart himself didn't have a great season. Um, but I think people that understand Championship football will realise that for this, for for the last five or six years, Bart's been one of the best goalies in the league. And this season, to be honest, he's been unbelievable. Um, and I'd have been I'd have been the first person to vote for him Player of the Season. He has that won us so many points, uh, and to be, he's a great guy to have around the place. Really laid back. And obviously, it's important that with people like him, that the number two and number three and Frankie Field and Steely really pushed him as well. And we've got a great, great change room in terms of um, everyone really wants everyone to do well. It's very rare that probably the number two and number three goalie would want the first choice goalie to do so well. But that's the sort of group that we've got. Um, and that is important that everyone's sort of pushing in the right direction. And Bart, like you say, he was, uh, he was unbeatable at times. So for him to, to get the accolade of the most clean sheets was well deserved, I think. It seems like there's a fantastic camaraderie as well between the, the whole squad that you've got. You talked about the three goalkeepers there who are, you just look at the names, the three of the championships, some, some fantastic goalkeepers that we've seen along mm. the years. And then yourself, and then you talked about some of the other individual members of that squad. You've got a really experienced but fresh squad, haven't you? Yeah, I think it's important. I think every player at every club goes, oh, we've got a great changer and we've got a great changer. Um, but that, that is, that's our main strength. Um, and everyone says it uh, when they come in. We had we have players come alone, and the likes of Jason Malumbi and Mason Bennett um, absolutely loved it because um, we've got such a tight knit group. Um, and that comes from really the captain, really Alex Pierce. Completely, he runs the change of room, and then we've got Sean Williams as well, who's just been sort of promoted to a player coach. Uh, so he's now the link between the two. So it's it works really well. We've got a few young players coming through. Ben Thompson has been here a while now in the first team. Billy Mitchell's another one coming through who's been at Mill since they're sort of ten years old. So we've got that great mix. And then the likes of like me, Cooper, uh, Marlon Romeo, Tom Bradshaw in between. Uh, they're hungry to do well, really. So it's a good mix. Um, and like I said before, that the manager won't allow the football club to stand still. Um, so as long as he's here and we keep the predom- predominantly, we keep most of our squad together, then there's no reason why we can't be successful for the next sort of two or three seasons, hopefully. It seems like there's a bit of an air of excitement for this upcoming season, albeit it will be a little bit overshadowed by the fact, as you said, that there'll be no fans to share the, the opening day or the first fixture at, at the Den. But there is a chance there for you guys to build on that success that you had last season and, and go and push the, the top six in the division. Yeah, definitely. I think we've had sort of two out of three seasons in this league now. We've finished eighth. So it shows... Um, to be honest, for a club of this size, for us to compete with the likes of your Forests and, and your Swansea's and your Cardiff's that have been in uh, in the Premier League and parachute payments and that sort of stuff over the last three or four seasons, um, for us, clubs like us and Preston to keep pushing them sort of teams close is, is something that we need to keep striving to do. Uh, I keep hoping that we can just sort of float around that top 10 and then one year hopefully just nick in that sixth place and then like you say, and anything can happen from that point. Uh, I think last year there were some brilliant teams and I think the the, t- the top two that went up and then Fulham and Brentford in the playoff final, I think, to be honest, them four were the head and shoulders above everyone else. Uh, so it was the right four that ended in there. Um, and we're hoping that this season we can be one of them teams that can hopefully push um, and then go one better this season. But again, we're not one of the bigger clubs in the league. So I think first and foremost, you've got a, every single season, you have big clubs down the bottom end of the table. Um, so I think for a Millwall in a championship, the first thing is always going to be get as many points as we can um, to stay up and then head towards the top half of the table and try and be 
ambitious and like with the players that we have got and the manager that we've got, I don't see why there's no reason why we can't um, certainly do as well as we did last year, if not even one better. Do you think that makes your lives a little bit easier being not one of the bigger clubs in this division, so to speak, that you can go out there and if you go and get a few points, great, but you have that element of surprise then to teams where you can turn up one week and, and put a few past the big team and then the next week you go, Millwall or something to, to be looked at in that respect. Yeah, certainly. I mean, against the top teams this season, we've had some brilliant results. Uh, I think we beat Preston twice. Uh, we beat Forest 3-0 away. We beat Leeds. Um, we beat Brentford. So we've done really well against the top sides this season. Um, for us, our, our struggle has actually been against the team, so-called smaller clubs that sometimes come to the den and are happy to get a point. And where we, we're used to sitting deep and absorbing pressure and counter-attacking, we've, we've struggled to break teams down sometimes. So for us, we're more worried about the teams down the bottom of the table and finding a way to, to make, make them chances and, and be a bit more clinical. Didn't score enough goals last season. So going into this season, that's the real area that we're, that we're looking to improve on. Um, but it does certainly help sort of when you go into every season. Um, we don't have that huge pressure on us where we have to go up because we've gone and spent 15 million on a player because as much as we are trying to bridge that gap, I don't imagine that we're going to sign anyone tomorrow for probably 5 million, let alone 15 million. So for us, it's a, a case of, like I said, just small steps, uh, keep improving every season. And um, hopefully we can one day just nick in that playoffs. A couple of teams obviously coming back into the division as well, Watford, Bournemouth, Norwich. And then the likes of Wickham Wanderers obviously making the, the step up. They were a team that were relegated, uh, sorry, were tipped for a relegation last season and ended up doing unbelievable and winning that playoff final a team that obviously you'll be looking to play for one of the first times in a very very long time so to speak in, in league action but a team that has got a potential to mix a lot of stuff up haven't they yeah and I think what I said there about our change room I think we had uh, one of Jason McCarthy from from Mill went on loan there last season and he said it's one of the best change rooms he's been, been in at Wickham and I think you saw that in the final um, sort of the camaraderie that they've got and, and again just goes to show sometimes that you don't need to have the best players to be successful. Um, and they've they done very well. Um, and obviously, with people like Akin Femmer and Jacobson and Stewart, that have sort of led that charge for them. And just goes to show how important having a strong change room is. And obviously, very, very underrated manager. So we certainly won't be taking them lightly next season. As we know ourselves, when we came up, we, we went very close to getting in the playoffs ourselves the first year. So I think every year now, the championship's getting closer and closer. Uh, when I think when I first started playing in it, you had your runaway teams, the likes of Wolves and and Bournemouth one year, whereas now it seems to be a lot closer. Um, and that's probably because the teams from League One come up and, and have done really well and a few have, estab have established themselves. And obviously the teams that come down now, um, there's so many big clubs in the Championship now that when, you, when the teams do come down from the Premier League, they're not necessarily bigger clubs than what's already in the league, to be honest. Fixture release day now on Friday as well. Do, as a professional footballer, do, do you get excited like fans do to say, like, look, I, I wonder where we are on this day, isn't it? particular fixtures or dates that you look out for? Well, I always look at Christmas. I always think, can we be at home on Boxing Day? So I can be at home with my family Christmas Day. Um, I think everyone wants to see their kids open presents on Christmas Day. So definitely, I look at Christmas Day first and think, hopefully we can be at home. Um, but again, it's, it's weird this season. There's always games that you look at and think, oh, that's going to be a great atmosphere. But you don't know if there's going to be fans there. Um, so again, it's just going to be just going to be interesting how how they do things and how soon we can get the fans back in. And if it's safe and the right thing to do, then I'm just looking forward to it, to be honest. But yeah, the, the fixture release, it always does make things feel a little bit more real. Um, I imagine myself and a few other players around the country will all be panicking when they see Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, thinking, Christ, we've got so many games. Um, yeah, so it just be, it's going to be very different this time around, I think. And a final word on yourself then. You've obviously been at Millwall now for a number of years. You've, you've enjoyed a lot of highs, including at League One playoff final winner's medal as well to your name. How much have you really enjoyed your time there? Obviously, you seem to be going from strength to strength. The numbers don't lie in that respect. But how do you personally put your, your feelings down and how much have you enjoyed your time at the den? Yeah, I've loved it. Um, loved it as soon as I came, really. Obviously, I had a bit of a stop and start time at Wolves and it was a real transitional period for Wolves and then to come back to, to Millwall. Um, Felt settled straight away, um, really enjoyed it and think I've really improved sort of every 12-month period I look at, I think I've really improved. So hopefully I can keep that up and if the club keep pushing forward, um, I'd really like to be a part of that and 
like I said before, with this manager in charge, um, he won't allow the club to stay stagnant. So with him in charge and we can keep hold of our best players, um, people and keep signing people that have really improved us, the likes of Woodsy that have come and improved us and people like Troy that's going to be a big player for us this season. And I really do believe that Mill can um, certainly really um, be solid in, in the top half of the table and hopefully, like I said, push into the playoffs one day in the next sort of two or three seasons would be would be our primary target, really. 